The Curse of the Pharaohs, a legendary hex said to befall those who disturb ancient Egyptian tombs, has fascinated and terrified for centuries. Tales of sudden deaths, mysterious illnesses, and inexplicable bad luck abound, especially surrounding the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. While some attribute these misfortunes to ancient curses, others point to scientific explanations like bacteria, fungi, or radiation. Yet, the allure of a supernatural curse remains strong. From the death of Lord Carnarvon to strange occurrences reported by renowned archaeologists, the line between myth and reality blurs. Is there truly a curse, or is it all coincidence? Watch to the end to discover. The notion of a curse tied to ancient Egyptian tombs is as intriguing as it is terrifying. This curse is supposedly cast upon anyone who disturbs the mummy of an ancient Egyptian, particularly a pharaoh. It is claimed to cause bad luck, illness, or even death. Intriguingly, it doesn't discriminate between thieves and archaeologists. The curse's legendary status grew significantly in the 20th century, fueled by numerous accounts and evolving from mystical explanations to scientific hypotheses. The origins of these tales can be traced back to the 19th century, though they gained significant traction following the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb by Howard Carter in 1922. Despite popular belief, no curse was found inscribed in Tutankhamun's tomb. Renowned Egyptologist Donald B. Redford even dismissed the curse as unadulterated claptrap, highlighting the meager evidence supporting such claims. Historically, genuine ancient curses have been rare, with most instances dating back to the Old Kingdom era. These curses were often aimed at the Ka priests, responsible for preserving the tomb's ritual purity, rather than deterring robbers. For instance, the Mastaba of Kantika Ekeki from the 6th century at Saqqara contains an inscription warning those who enter impure will face judgment and punishment. Such warnings were more about maintaining the sanctity of the tomb than cursing intruders. Curses became less common after the Old Kingdom, though they grew more severe when they did appear. These later curses sometimes invoked the wrath of deities like Thoth or the destructive power of Sekhemet. An example quoted by Zahi Hawass reads, Cursed be those who disturb the rest of a pharaoh. They that shall break the seal of this tomb shall meet death by a disease that no doctor can diagnose. Such vivid warnings captured the imagination and added to the mystique surrounding ancient Egyptian tombs. In modern times, stories of the mummy's curse have often intertwined with reports of perceived bad luck linked to the handling of mummies and artifacts. One notable account from 1699 involves a Polish traveler who bought two mummies in Alexandria. During his sea journey, he experienced recurring visions of specters and severe storms, which only subsided after the mummies were thrown overboard. These stories, predating the deciphering of hieroglyphs, reflect early perceptions of the curse as an ominous force. Zahi Hawass, a prominent archaeologist, has recounted personal experiences that he attributes to the curse. While transporting artifacts from Qom Abu Bilo, he reported a series of familial deaths coinciding with significant excavation anniversaries. During another excavation at Giza, he found a curse inscribed in a tomb warning of retribution by crocodiles, snakes, and scorpions. Despite claiming not to be superstitious, these experiences led him to show caution in disturbing mummies, especially after dreams haunted him until he reunited a mummy with its children. The concept of a mummy reviving from the dead, central to many curse tales, emerged from early works of fiction. Jane C. Loudon's 1827 novel, The Mummy, or a tale of the 22nd century, was among the first to combine horror and science fiction with the idea of a mummy's curse. Louisa May Alcott's 1869 story, Lost in a Pyramid or the Mummy's Curse, further popularized this theme. Interestingly, earlier stories discovered later suggest that female authors may have pioneered the mummy curse narrative, potentially as proto-feminist tales. Despite these stories, the real scientific basis for the so-called curse often points to more mundane causes. Bacteria, fungi, and even radiation have been suggested as possible explanations for the illnesses and deaths linked to tomb explorations. Aspergillus flavus, a toxic mold, could have caused respiratory issues among those who entered the tombs. However, these theories remain speculative and have not definitively debunked the curse myth.
As we delve deeper into the stories and evidence, the line between myth and reality becomes even more blurred, leaving us to wonder, is there a real curse, or is it all just a series of coincidental misfortunes? As we delve deeper into the tale of the Pharaoh's curse, we arrive at a pivotal moment, the opening of Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. This discovery not only brought forth extraordinary treasures, but also intensified the legend of the curse. Howard Carter, a determined British archaeologist, spent years searching for the young pharaoh's tomb. On November 4, 1922, his persistence paid off. Carter's team uncovered a step leading to a sealed door marked with royal cartouches. By November 26, the doorway was revealed, and behind it lay another sealed door, this time with the untouched seals of the necropolis. Excitement and anticipation soared. On November 29, 1922, with his financier Lord Carnivan at his side, Carter made a small breach in the upper left-hand corner of the door. As he peered inside with a candle, he saw a collection of items, strange animals, statues, and gold. When Carnivan asked if he could see anything, Carter famously replied, Yes, wonderful things. The tomb, designated KV-62, contained over 5,000 artifacts, ranging from the mundane to the magnificent. Among these were the iconic golden mask, intricately designed jewelry, and the pharaoh's chariot. However, amidst the marvels lay a sinister undercurrent. Shortly after the tomb's opening, strange incidents began to unfold, adding fuel to the curse legend. Lord Carnivan, the man who had funded the excavation, was the first to succumb. In March of 1923, a mosquito bite on his cheek became infected, leading to blood poisoning. He died on April 5, 1923. At the moment of his death, Cairo experienced a citywide blackout. This eerie coincidence sparked rumors of a curse, a notion that the press eagerly embraced. Stories spread like wildfire, suggesting Carnivan's death was just the beginning. Reports emerged of other mysterious deaths. George J. Gould I, a wealthy American financier who had visited the tomb, died in May of 1923 after developing a fever. A.C. Mace, a key member of Carter's team, fell seriously ill and passed away in 1928. Richard Bethel, Carter's secretary, was found dead in 1929 under suspicious circumstances. His father, Lord Westbury, threw himself from a window, unable to bear the grief. Each death seemed to tighten the grip of the so-called curse. Yet, not all who entered the tomb met a grim fate. Howard Carter himself lived for another 16 years, passing away in 1939. Lady Evelyn Herbert, Carnivon's daughter who had been among the first to enter the tomb, lived until 1980. These survivors cast doubt on the curse, suggesting it might be more myth than reality. As the world debated the validity of the curse, scientists sought rational explanations. Some suggested that ancient bacteria or mold spores could have caused infections. Aspergillus flavus, a toxic mold, was one potential culprit. Others pointed to toxic gases or even radiation. These theories, while intriguing, never fully dispelled the allure of the curse. Beyond the immediate deaths, strange phenomena continued to be reported. Howard Carter once found a cobra in his house, a symbol of the Egyptian monarchy, on the very day he discovered the tomb. This incident further fueled the superstitions. Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes and a known spiritualist, suggested that elemental spirits or ancient priests' curse might be at work. His speculations only heightened public fascination. The media played a significant role in perpetuating the curse myth. Newspapers of the time, eager for sensational stories, latched onto every mysterious death and unexplained event. Headlines proclaimed the curse's power, capturing the public's imagination. Hollywood soon followed, with films portraying vengeful mummies and ancient curses, cementing the legend in popular culture. Transitioning from the legendary curse of Tutankhamun, another mysterious tale involving ancient Egypt surfaced in the early 20th century. This time, the eerie story is intertwined with one of history's most infamous maritime disasters, the sinking of the Titanic. In the early 1900s, the media was captivated by supernatural stories, and newspapers were filled with tales of ghosts, curses, and inexplicable phenomena. Among these, one story stood out, the unlucky mummy. 
This ancient artifact, allegedly cursed, was linked to a series of tragedies and misfortunes. The Washington Post, known for its sensational headlines, published multiple stories about the unlucky mummy. Headlines like, Face on Mummy's Case Comes to Life Again, and Coffin Carries Curse, Mummy Case of Priestess Has Sinister Record, drew readers in with their chilling narratives. The most notorious claim, however, was that the mummy's curse caused the sinking of the Titanic. William T. Stead, a prominent English editor and spiritualist, was a passenger on the Titanic. Stead had a strong interest in the supernatural and often shared eerie tales. On board the Titanic, he recounted a story about a mummy's curse to fellow passengers. He spoke of the mummy of a priestess of Amun-Ra, whose curse supposedly brought misfortune to all who disturbed her tomb. Hours after sharing this story, Stead perished in the icy waters of the North Atlantic, fueling the myth that the curse had followed him onto the ship. The unlucky mummy was actually a painted wooden coffin lid of a priestess, now displayed in the British Museum. Stories of its malevolent influence date back to the 19th century. One tale tells of a group of British tourists who bought the mummy case in Egypt. Almost immediately, misfortune struck. One member lost an arm, another died in poverty, and a third was shot. The owner of the case suffered financial ruin and died shortly after returning to England. When the mummy case was eventually donated to the British Museum, its sinister reputation followed. Mademoiselle Blavatsky, a famous theosophist, allegedly sensed a malignant presence near the case and warned of its dangers. Subsequent accidents involving those who handled or transported the case further cemented its cursed status. Despite the fascination with these supernatural stories, most historians and scientists dismiss the curse as mere coincidence or sensationalism. The tales of the unlucky mummy and its supposed curse highlight our enduring fascination with the mysterious and the unknown. As we explore these eerie legends, the line between myth and reality remains blurred. Are these stories just products of our imagination, or is there something more at play? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into ancient curses, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update, and let us know in the comments, do you believe in the curse of the pharaohs?